Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are going to try and fix, or at least improve, the ASUS RX 5700 XT Tough Gaming X3 graphics card. For those of you who missed it, I purchased and reviewed this graphics card back in October last year and found it to be the worst 5700 XT I'd come across. At the time, I'd pretty much come across every single model. The deal breaker was the memory cooling. Basically, the GDDR6 memory ran excessively hot and at times exceeded safe operating temperatures going over 100 degrees Celsius. And that, in my opinion, made it a defective product. And it has since proven me correct as an alarming number of them have failed, at least according to user reviews. Quite interestingly, there appear to be no other professional reviews of the 5700 XT Tough model uh, online, at least to my knowledge. And I'm certain there are no other reviews that expose this fatal flaw. That said, Kit Guru put together a great review of the non XT model and found it had no memory cooling at all which again resulted in unsafe temperatures. The good news is it seems through the combination of our reviews along with user reports that ASUS has decided to ax the tough 5700 series. And as it stands, both the 5700 and 5700 XT versions have been dropped below the MSRP as I suppose ASUS attempt to get rid of any remaining stock to make their way for what I imagine will be a newer revised model that hopefully solves these issues. In the meantime, I'd advise anyone looking for a cheap 5700 series graphics card to avoid these discounted tough models and pick up one of the proven versions such as the PowerColor Red Dragon, the Sapphire Pulse or Gigabyte's Gaming OC for example. Having said that, I'm making this video where I attempt to fix the tough 5700 XT for two reasons. First and foremost, I'm going to try and help those of you who were unfortunate enough to buy this model and for whatever reason you can't exchange it for something better. And I know there are quite a few of you scattered around the world that are in that situation. And secondly, I'm just trying to answer the question we've been asked, well, countless times really since the original review and it's resurfaced a lot with these new discounts. And of course that question is, can you fix the memory so it runs at safe temperatures? Again, I just want to stress that I'm not recommending that you buy one of these cards and out there discounted, but a lot of people are asking, you guys seem genuinely interested in, you know, what can we do to fix this thing? Is it possible? So that's what we'll be looking at today. And also just to be clear, this isn't a guide on how to improve the Tough 5700 XT. So it's not like a step-by-step -step guide showing you exactly what you need and how to apply it. It's more just, could it be fixed? Sort of answering the question, could it be fixed? And we'll, yeah, obviously we'll be looking into that, but I don't recommend doing this unless it's really a last resort. And then of course, if you do, you're doing so at your own risk. So why does the GDDR6 memory on the Tough 5700 XT run so bloody hot? Well, obviously it's the design and what's wrong with the design is two things, at least as far as I can tell. Firstly, attached to the memory is a thin little aluminum heat spreader that weighs just 24 grams and features very little surface area. That said, if you could push a reasonable volume of air over every square millimeter of this thing, the memory temps wouldn't be too bad. Problem is you can't, as the main heat sink which is used to cool the GPU and VRM almost completely blocks airflow to the memory heat spreader. The main heat sink also doesn't come in contact with this heat spreader, so it can't help transfer heat away from the GDDR6 memory. I'd estimate that well under half of the heat spreader's surface area is actually exposed to airflow, making it virtually useless. Therefore, if we can increase the surface area and perhaps even find a way to attach the heat spreader to the primary heat sink, then I think we could drop memory temperatures by a little bit. So anyway, I started by identifying the areas where we could pad out uh, the gap between the primary heat sink and the heat spreader. So do that with a couple of thermal pads. And then I was also looking at areas where we could perhaps fit some heat sinks, attach them with some thermal adhesive, increase the surface area, and hopefully capture some airflow from the fans above. So that was the plan. There are three areas where you can place thermal pads to move heat away from the memory. Two of these spots are on either side of the GPU under the heat pipes in the main heat sink. And the other is at the top of the card above a small fin array that sticks out of the top left fin bank. Here I double stacked some EK one millimeter thick pads. So I suppose if you have two millimeter pads handy, that would work nicely. I then cut these pads to the appropriate size and stuck them to the heat spreader. I then found a few small heat sinks I had laying around from past projects, grabbed some Arctic thermal adhesive and stuck them where I could. I managed to get a small square shaped heat sink beneath the heat pipes in the middle of the card and then a rectangular shaped heat sink on the opposite side. I was also able to stick three more rectangular heat sinks along the bottom of the heat spreader, though these see no direct airflow as they're blocked entirely by the fan shroud, 
but I figured every bit would help. If you attempt to do this, make sure you fit the main heatsink back onto the card before you give the thermal adhesive a chance to set rock hard, because if you have something in the way, you're going to have to try and snap it off, because obviously the cooler needs to go back on, so just get them there. Initially the adhesive is sort of like just thermal paste, so you can move it around and adjust it, and uh, you can manipulate it for quite some time, so just make sure the cooler will go back on after you've added the heat sinks around. Obviously this model is still stock, this is the model I've modified, and you can see some of the heat sinks down here. They were given 24 hours uh, to set, just to make sure that when I started stress testing they weren't going to fall off. Okay, so at this point I have to admit I was super intrigued to see if those modifications would improve things, or perhaps just make them worse. The first run seemed to go well, at least I thought so initially. Uh, the GPU, the VRM, and the GDDR6 memory temps, they were all well down, but the fan speed had shot right up. Although the GPU edge and hotspot temperatures were quite low, the card was acting as if there was some sort of thermal issue. As I said, the, the fan speed had gone right up, the fans were pretty much going ballistic, but the GPU frequency, that had also dropped down around four to 500 megahertz lower than where it should have been. So it seemed as though the thermal pads that I'd put between the heat sink and the heat spreader, they weren't crushing down as much as I thought they would. They weren't squashing down to take up uh, that gap. They were possibly a little oversized. Not sure if that was the problem, but basically to counter that problem, I got some really thin plastic washers and then padded out the screws on the back side of the card. And that seemed to have solved the problem. Now to recap, out of the box, this graphics card was hitting 104 degrees for the GDDR6 memory, 80 degrees for the VRM, and 76 degrees for the GPU. Both the VRM and GPU temps are quite fine, it's the GDDR6 memory that's the deal breaker. So that's what the card did after an hour in a 21 degree room, running the F1 2019 benchmark on a continuous loop. Now, here's a look at our modifications under the exact same test conditions with the same fan speed. The GPU temp was exactly the same, and the VRM temp dropped by just 2 degrees, so much of a muchness there. Of course, it is the GDDR6 memory temps that we're interested in, and I'm happy to report that we did make some progress here, dropping the peak temperature from 104 degrees down to 92 degrees, and that's a 12 degree drop in temperature, and frankly, I don't think we could have realistically expected anything much better than that. Granted, 92 degrees is still hotter than the AMD reference card and many of the AOB models that we've come across so far, but it is a big improvement and should avoid the card killing itself after prolonged use. I think the key here are those thermal pads, and I could have definitely included more, and also using 2mm thick pads would probably work better as well. Anyway, overall I think this was a success, and we've proven it is certainly possible to make the 5700 XT tough a bit better and get those GDDR6 temps down to a safe working range. Unfortunately, fixing the non-XT model, which doesn't come with a heat spreader at all, well, that's going to be significantly more difficult. So, yeah, not sure what you'll do about that one. And just wrapping this video up, I wanted to discuss what ASUS has done here and question if they could have handled things better. And I really want to hear your thoughts on this one. It'll help me work out how we should tackle these things in the future. Anyway, let's just get into it. I suppose crap products, they are things that can happen, and it seems like every brand has, well, they release crap products from time to time. We've pretty much seen that when testing VRM thermals and graphics cards and whatnot. They, crap products happen is what I'm trying to say. For me though, I find the most telling thing about a brand's integrity, and I suppose the appreciation of their customers, is how they handle these situations. We actually have some recent examples of other brands cocking up their 5700 XT products, take MSI and XFX for example. MSI did a poor job of aligning the thermal pads on their Evoke and Mech 5700 series graphics cards, and after this issue was brought to their attention, they revised both models with a GP version, which corrected the issue, though admittedly it was a very minor issue that only impacted the GDDR6 memory temps by 3-4 to four degrees, and they were really already acceptable, which makes MSI's effort to improve the quality of these models all the more impressive. And we saw that XFX went the extra mile, not only to revise their thick tube with a better designed cooler, but also offer a replacement for those who have already purchased it. So correcting mistakes really doesn't get much better than that. And it's worth noting that XFX isn't a big company, so this is a seriously impressive gesture on their behalf, and clearly they are committed to looking after their customers. 
Now, let me be clear about this. Neither the MSI Mech, Evoke, or the XFX Thick 2 5700 XT graphics cards were anywhere near as bad as the ASUS Tough 5700 series, like not even remotely close. None of those cards were at risk of total failure due to temperatures. They were just a little louder than they probably should have been. The Tough, on the other hand, is a ticking time bomb. So is it acceptable that ASUS continues to sell remaining stock? Or should they have cut their losses and pulled these tough models from shelves and then fix the cooler later or whatever they had to do, rather than simply discount it to try and flog off remaining stock? ASUS seem to think they've made a rather nice gesture here by discounting these graphics cards, but I'm not sure it was the way to go. So again, please let me know what you think. Given ASUS is the biggest player in this industry, I think they could have followed the example set by one of the smallest players and shipped tough owners a new heatsink while also upgrading remaining stock. I am pleased that ASUS has, I, well, I, I'm pleased to believe that ASUS has discontinued these tough models. That's what I'm hearing from retailers and people in the industry that I'm speaking to, but again, no official word from ASUS. I believe we will be getting a tough Evo update, uh, similar to what we saw with the 5700 XT version. So fingers crossed that is a thing. And yeah, you won't see these things on shelves for much longer. A quick update here, I just received some new information from ASUS regarding their Strix 5700 XT that we looked at a few weeks ago and exposed a certain issue with the mounting of the heatsink. If you missed that video, just go check it out. I'm not going to explain all the details again here. This is just an update on that situation. ASUS has said AMD recommended between 30 and 40 PSI, give or take 10 PSI, for the mounting pressure on Navi-based GPUs. Turns out though, perhaps the mounting pressure can be much higher than 30 to 40 PSI. Not really sure on those facts at this point. I haven't had a chance to confirm any of this with AMD, but really it doesn't matter. Whatever the pressure AMD spec calls for, ASUS still messed up and they now seem to be admitting as much. They've told me that they acknowledge that they didn't do enough validation and they sincerely apologize for the imperfect out of the box experience. They say they're committed to correcting the problem and will work to ensure this doesn't happen again. Their solution to fix the issue is to change the GPU mounting screws from 40 PSI to 60 PSI and the VRM screws will now fully tighten to ensure the heatsink is balanced, which I believe is the biggest issue with the original design. They say that from January 2020 onwards, these changes will be made on all ASUS Navi-based graphics cards. Now, for existing stock in the ANZ region, ASUS will rework that stock with the newer parts once they arrive next week. So this will ensure a perfect out-of-the-box experience. As for the global rollout, well, it's still under discussion with other countries, so we we'll just have to wait and see what the updates are there. Lastly, for ANZ customers who are affected by this issue, ASUS is offering a direct priority repair, which covers postage costs to and from their service center. Details on how to proceed will be available next week once the parts arrive. The service center turnaround will be three working days, and this of course does exclude courier time. So it's great to see ASUS acknowledging and getting on top of the Strix issue. And we will also be receiving an update kit from ASUS so we can test it out and provide you guys with an updated video. So I'm very excited that we are able to do that. And I'm pleased that we were able to expose this issue and get it addressed. Anyway, I hope this video has been helpful for those of you with a tough 5700 XT graphics card that for whatever reason you can't send back to get a better one. And I have been told that is a problem in some regions or with some retailers. So yeah, hopefully this was helpful. It is possible to improve the memory temperatures and get them within a safe working range. Again, I'd, I'd probably start with the thermal pads and go from there. We'll take a bit of experimentation. As I said, this isn't an exact guide, but it lets you know that with some thermal pads and possibly some thermal adhesive and small heat sinks can get those temperatures down. That's going to do it for this one, but I would really just like to thank our Patreon members. They make content like this possible. And they really do. We, we couldn't get this as a review sample. And by the time we did get it, it wasn't really worth buying because I, I suppose 5700 XT review fatigue had really set in. We'd done a dozen of these. Seemed like a lot of you guys didn't really want to watch any more 5700 XT AIB reviews, but a lot of people were interested in this card. And because of our Patreons, we were able to take the risk there and buy it. 
And I'm glad we did in the end because yeah, we we found out what we found. And then follow up content like this is yeah also made possible by the Patreon members. So thank you to you guys. We appreciate you massively. And as always, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.